Donald Trump and J.D. Vance put Springfield, Ohio on the map this week by attempting to demonize the Haitian population there, and it's been a campaign disaster. And today I found a video from a celebrity who grew up in Springfield, and it is so striking and so thoughtful and even educational that I'm going to break one of my rules in presenting it to you. To date, I have done about 80 episodes for Occupy Democrats, and I thoroughly enjoyed deconstructing Donald and mangling Mega. But with each story, I usually feature two or three videos from different sources. You know, I do the weave. You know what the weave is? But today I'm deviating from my version of the weave and will play just a single video from end to end that singer John Legend posted to social media. Honestly, I'm not very familiar with his music, but I now consider myself a big fan of him as a thought leader. Watch the video and tell me if you agree as he A, educates us on why Springfield has a big Haitian population. They weren't just dumped there. B, makes the case for showing grace and compassion when integrating an immigrant population, and C, reminds us of our deep and rich immigration history and success stories. I hope you enjoy and appreciate his words as much as I do. Hello, everyone. My name is John Legend, and I was born as John R. Stevens from a place called Springfield, Ohio. Oh, Springfield, Ohio. You may have heard of Springfield, Ohio this week. In fact, if you watch the debate, we were discussed by our presidential candidates, including a very special, interesting man named Donald J. Trump. Now, Springfield has had a large influx of Haitian immigrants who have come to our city. Now, our city had been shrinking for decades. We didn't have enough jobs. We, uh, didn't have enough opportunity. So people left and went somewhere else. So when I was there, we had upwards of 75,000 people. And in the last five years, we were down to like 60,000 people. But of late, during the Biden administration, there have been more jobs that opened up, more manufacturing jobs, more plants, factories that needed employees and we're ready to hire people. So we had a lot of job opportunities and we didn't have enough people in our town of 60,000 people to fill those jobs. And during the same time, there had been upheaval and turmoil in Haiti and the federal government granted visa, visas and, and uh, immigration status to a certain number of Haitian immigrants so they could come to our country legally. And our demand in Springfield for additional labor met up with the supply of additional Haitian immigrants. And here we are. We had about 15,000 or so immigrants move to my town of 60,000. Now, you might say, wow, that's a lot of people for a town that only had 60,000 before, that's a 25% increase. That is correct. So you might imagine there are some challenges with, you know, integrating a new population, new language, new culture, new dietary uh, preferences, all kinds of reasons why there might be growing pains um, making sure there are enough services to accommodate the new larger population that might need bilingual service providers, et cetera, et cetera. So there are plenty of reasons why this might be a challenge for my hometown. Uh, but the bottom line is these people came to Springfield because there were jobs for them and they were willing to work and they wanted to live the American dream, just like your German ancestors, your Irish ancestors, your Italian ancestors, your Jewish ancestors, your Jamaican ancestors, your Polish ancestors, all these ancestors who have moved to this country, maybe not speaking the language that everyone else spoke, maybe not eating the same foods, maybe having to adjust, maybe having to integrate, 
but all coming because they saw opportunity for themselves and their families in the American dream. And they came here to do that. Some facts about immigrants. They usually do very well here. They are hardworking. They're ambitious. They commit less crime than native born Americans. And they will assimilate and integrate in time, but it takes time. So I think all of us need to have the same kind of grace that we would want our ancestors to have when they moved here with our Haitian brothers and sisters who move here too. And nobody's eating cats. Nobody's eating dogs. We all just want to live and flourish and raise our families in a healthy and safe environment. How about we love one another? I grew up in the Christian tradition. We said to love our neighbor as we love ourselves and treat strangers as though they might be Christ. So how about we adopt that ethos when we talk about immigrants moving to our communities and don't spread hateful, xenophobic, racist lies about them. John R. Stevens from Springfield, signing off. Well said, John Legend. Yesterday, my story was about another singer, Linda Ronstadt, who had some very harsh words for Donald Trump, and it included her comparisons of his rise to Hitler's. Later that day, I was telling my dear friend Kathy that during Trump's term, I resisted the Hitler comparisons because I thought, as bad as Trump is, there's only one Hitler. But I have since come to understand the comparison. When Donald Trump uses words like vermin to describe immigrants or says things like they're poisoning the blood of our country, the parallels to Hitler's rhetoric and the strategy to stoke fear and xenophobia are unmistakable. And this week's story is just more of the same. All of it is unacceptable and the opposite of making America great again. And on November 5th, we have the opportunity to make the stand that we're not going back. Not going back to Nazi Germany and not going back to a place of Trump's white nationalism. I'm Dan. Thanks for watching and let's continue to occupy democracy together.